It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Samsung U32 E850R. The OSD is controlled by quite nicely spaced out um, pressable buttons at the bottom right here. Um, they're, they're nicely labelled as well, they've got labels on the buttons themselves and the functions are quite clearly labelled on screen as well. The last one here is a little power button. Um, it has a small pinprick blue power LED, which I find quite unobtrusive. And the second option along here I'm going to start with, I'll, I'll go on to the main menu a bit later. There's iSaver, which is one of the low blue um, light settings of the monitor. And this reduces the brightness, it actually locks the brightness control, it reduces the contrast of the screen massively. Um, which is done on purpose because it's supposed to um, reduce the amount of time your eye is spending adapting to different brightnesses on the screen because the, the brightness levels are far more uniform if the contrast is lower. And it also massively decreases the output from, uh, of blue light from the, the monitor. It reduces the blue colour channel. To explore that a bit more in the review, I think it's got good utility, a nice little uh, mode there third button along allows you to quickly adjust the brightness, contrast and volume. The fourth button along allows you to select a source used by the monitor manually and there's a picture in picture slash picture by picture setting which I'll come on to in the main menu. The main menu you'll notice it's quite large, quite visible, um, quite nicely labelled up and I mean I know some people would be concerned with it, with it. this is a UHD monitor um, so-called 4k it uh, has a very high resolution high pixel density although it's a very large screen 30 31 and a half inches it um, it does have high resolution and you can see the, the desktop icons are rather small the elements on the screen are rather small I, I can view it no problem from a normal viewing posi uh, position without using scaling and I, I explain that in the review, but um, yeah, either way, you don't have to worry about the, the menu being really tiny and, and hard to read or anything like that, even if your, your eyesight's not great. So that's uh, the general layout of the menu. It's, it's quite similar to um, a lot of modern Samsung screens. If you go into a bit deeper into the menu, for example, I'm on the picture uh, settings here, it actually shows you what each function does as well which is quite useful so there, there are some magic bright presets which I explore in the review a bit and there are just a, a few of those to choose from there's a brightness control which you can change in increments of, of one one individual unit at a time as you'd expect from a monitor same with the contrast there's a sharpness control which change in increments of 4, although I find the, the default sharpness to be optimal anyway and I don't think most users will have to uh, adjust that. There are various colour settings as well, so you can change the red, green and blue colour channels and you can also use a preset colour tone setting if you prefer and I, I quite like um, warm two here which is essentially a low blue light setting um, and I actually use that just for my personal viewing comfort in the evening as well uh, not not for the testing and the review but just uh, just for my own comfort there's also three gamma modes which are explored in the review mode one mode two and mode three HDMI black level which is greyed out because I'm using display port so that's not applicable there is the eye saver mode, which I've already discussed. There is a game mode, and if you set that to always on rather than just on, it'll be on once you turn the the cycle the power off on the monitor, then turn the monitor back on. It'll 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 go straight onto game mode. Whereas if you just select on and um, once you power off the monitor, turn it back on, I, it should uh, just revert to your normal setting with game mode off and I'm not gonna 
I think I've given Samsung enough stick for their game mode. I, I don't like it at all. Um, and I explained that in the review. So if you want to find out more about that, just look at the review. Um, I'm not going to say anything more about that. There's a response time setting. You can select standard, faster or fastest. And as I explored in the review, faster, the default, is actually the, the best option by quite some margin. And there are a few greyed out options here, picture size and screen adjustment, which only apply to analog VGA connections. It's a picture in picture, picture by picture section of the menu. And this allows you to enable a picture in picture or picture by picture mode of the, of the screen. And this is going to be pretty boring because I've only got one source connected to the monitor at the moment. I've only got my main PC connected so it's just going to be half a blank screen for you there because I've got picture by picture. So once you've enabled this there are various things you can you can adjust. You can adjust the size um, well it's really you can you can choose picture by picture as it is now or the, the remaining options which are picture in picture so you can have a, a small picture in picture there you can see at the, uh, the top right of the screen there that would be another source showing there if I had something else connected or you can make that a bit bigger or a lot bigger you can also change the position so you can have it in the top left top right bottom left or bottom right and you can control the sound source used and as I say it explains everything here as you go through the menu itself so if, if my explanations aren't very clear here uh, it doesn't really matter the screen tells you everything you need to know and you can select the source used for each of the each of the uh, parts of the screen so I could swap that around if I wanted so I could have my computer show uh, my main PC showing there and something else filling the rest of the screen for example and you can change um, these are basically aspect ratio options which will, will change how the image is displayed um, it, it doesn't apply to the native resolution that I'm using here but it does to certain lower than native resolutions and you can also adjust the contrast um, Independently, if, you, if you're using picture by picture, there are actually a few more options uh, available to you. So I'm just going to switch this to picture by picture instead of picture in picture. And you can see the source menu is quite nicely laid out as well. I don't think I showed you that before. Um, and that makes it quite uh, quite obvious what it's doing so you know the, the left side of the screen has the display port and the right side will have HDMI or I can, I can jiggle that about if I want and you can also independently set the contrast when you're using picture by picture so the default 75 or you can you can change that and you can change that for each individual source which is, uh, could be quite useful depending on the sources you're using next there's on-screen display and that allows you to enable or disable a transparency effect that's used for the OSD. It's quite a subtle little transparency effect, but you can, uh, and it's not very obvious with the desktop background I'm using at the moment. You can just see through it a little bit there, or you can disable it so it doesn't do that. You can change the language of the OSD. There are various different options there. I'll try not to select a language which I don't understand. I have done that before, and it's uh, a little bit annoying. And you can change the display time. So, um, as it says there, it's basically how long the menu window will remain on the screen when it's not in use. So I've got that set to 200 seconds, just for the purposes of this uh, video. I believe the default's 20 seconds, which is quite decent. Or if you're, if you're quick with your OSD and you want it to just disappear quite quickly after your last button press, you could set that to 5 seconds or 10 seconds as well. Next is System, and that has various uh, options on it. The first one here, which is probably of quite a 
uh, quite some interest to, to most people who are considering this monitor is the, the FreeSync functionality. So there are actually three options here. You can you can disable FreeSync, um, or it will be greyed out if you're using a GPU that doesn't support FreeSync or, or a port that doesn't support it, so it'll be set to off anyway. Um, there are two different engine types used here, standard engine and ultimate engine. I know that sounds very exotic, but all it actually is, the standard engine just gives you a fairly restricted uh, FreeSync operating range between 50 Hz and 60 Hz, whereas the ultimate engine will reduce the, the floor of the FreeSync operation to 40 Hz, so you get a uh, nice, um, fairly sort of smooth, stutter-free, tear-free, whatever, um, between 40 frames a second and 60 frames a second. Um, I've, I've tested both of these and I haven't found any disadvantage at all to using Ultimate Engine over Standard Engine, so I think Samsung have probably just done this because it kind of sounds cool and it's just a bit of a, possibly a bit of a selling point people know about this. Um, so I'll just stick to Ultimate Engine if you're using FreeSync. And the smart eco saving setting and all that does is just essentially just uh, reduces the brightness to a fairly low preset value when you when you turn that on that's all that does there is off timer plus and as it says there set the monitor to automatically turn off after a certain period of time um, this could get quite annoying um, or it could be of some utility if you like uh, your monitor to turn itself off. Um, so if I enable this, on some screens from Samsung this is actually enabled by default. I can't remember if it is on this one or not, so you might want to turn this off um, or check that it is off as well if you, if you don't want it to, a little message to pop up. So after a certain amount of time between one hour and 23 hours the screen will basically just say oh look I'm going to turn off if you don't press uh, a button on my OSD system so if you don't press that button it'll assume you're not using the monitor and it should just turn itself off so it's not really a very elegant solution compared to some monitors which have a sort of proximity sensor uh, or anything like that but it's, uh, it's an alternative way of, of, of achieving that kind of thing so before I forget, I'm going to turn this off because I don't want that kind of uh, thing bugging me. There's also an eco timer. I believe that reduces the brightness of the screen rather than turning it off after a set amount of time. Or I might be mistaken, that could actually... What I might do is, once the monitor's in standby, it uh, for a certain amount of time, it'll it'll just turn the monitor off. Um, well, it'll it'll turn it off as if you've pressed the power button to turn it off. So as you can see from my my lack of knowledge of these eco features, they're not really something I'm particularly interested in. When I'm not using the monitor, I'm I'm good. I, I just turn it off myself, so I don't really rely on these features uh, so much. But they're there if you want to use them. There's USB supercharging and that allows you to charge devices which are connected to the USB ports of the monitor even if the, the, the monitor itself is switched off and as, as per the review it's only actually the USB ports on the side of the monitor rather than the rear that actually support this. Um, yeah, so USB 1 and USB 2, so that that's the, uh, the ports on the side of the monitor rather than the back. And if you do enable this, it will increase the standby power consumption of the monitor slightly. So if you're not using this feature, um, you might as well just leave it off, just to, just to decrease the standby power consumption a little bit. You can set to PC or AV mode. Um, that doesn't really apply to modern games, consoles, or modern systems in general. It's just a sort of legacy feature for older systems where they might work better with the AV mode set rather than PC mode. It just uh, changes the, the signal a little, a little bit and the size of the screen a little bit. This is just a compatibility feature. You can change the DisplayPort version used, the revision of DisplayPort used by the monitor. And 
if you enable 1.1 you'd only really be wanting to do that if you are using an older system um, which doesn't actually support 1.2 um, 1.2 is required to actually run at the native resolution at 60 Hertz and it's also required to use FreeSync so this again is just a compatibility thing for using a, 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 graphic, a graphic system which only supports 1.1. You can manually select the port or you can have the monitor choose the port for you. I just leave this on auto because I've only got one thing connected to the monitor so it doesn't really matter for me. You can change how the, the keys respond um, to, your, to your presses on the OSD. And you can reset everything to the factory defaults. Finally, there's a little information section and that shows you what resolution the monitor is running at, um, what port you're using and also whether FreeSync is, is being used. Um, that doesn't mean that FreeSync is actively being used, I'm just on the desktop here, um, but that's just, if it says FreeSync there, it basically means you've got it connected to a FreeSync compatible GPU, you've told the monitor to use FreeSync, and if you go in a game or whatever or something that can use FreeSync, then it will be used. So there you have it. That was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Samsung U32 E850R. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info.